I'm gonna show you how to get the most from your sniper strike teams. I'm going to dig down into all four factions, so no matter what faction you play, you should be able to get something out of this video. I got a question from Grunt Props on Twitter. He asks, sniper strike teams, too close and they die, too far away and they don't affect the game. What are the realistic expectations I should have out of these units? This is Legion Strategy Talk. My name is Endless. Let's learn all about sniper strike teams. In range. Take the shot. We're going to start with the absolute basics, then move on to some more unit-specific notes. Strike teams are a unit consisting of two minis, and all factions have access to the sniper variant. These miniatures are the sniper heavy weapon and a second generic miniature. The sniper miniature is the unit leader. More on that later. All strike team variants have sharpshooter 1, which decreases enemy cover by 1. All sniper strike team variants have access to a scout move. Scout 2 for rebels and clones, scout 3 for empire and droids. These scout moves should be used to set up good firing positions. What's a good firing position? We'll talk about that later in the video. Sniper strike teams are divided into two flavors. The Galactic Civil War snipers, which came out first with native pierce and high velocity, and the Clone War snipers with better offense and defense dice but the weaker lethal keyword, and no high velocity, meaning dodge tokens can be spent against their shots. Should I ever put upgrades on my sniper teams? In general, no. One of the biggest advantages of strike teams is that they are a cheap activation, and putting upgrades on them takes away from that. Putting upgrades on your snipers also makes them trade disfavorably if you end up involved in a sniper war, so I just don't upgrade them. Before we move on, I want to make note of a recent change to the low profile keyword. The old version of the low profile rule simply improved your cover by one and you couldn't get past heavy cover this way. The new low profile rule states that your units cancel one additional hit while they have cover. So if your low profile sniper has heavy cover, this means they cancel three hits instead of the normal two. This means it's much more difficult to counter low profile snipers with your own snipers. Now your strike teams should have heavy cover most of the time because we're going to talk about the heavy weapon team keyword. Strike teams have the heavy weapon team keyword which turns the heavy weapon weapon you equip, that is the sniper, into the unit leader. This has several implications. If you can successfully hide the second miniature behind line of sight block, it can't be assigned to suffer wounds. If your strike team does suffer a wound, you then replace the second miniature with the heavy weapon, because the heavy weapon is the unit leader. This technique is called corner peeking and is a staple technique in strike team usage. You can also corner peek vertically, like say if a line of sight blocking building has a ladder to the roof, you can then clamber up that ladder and put your second miniature at the bottom of the building. You cannot, however, deploy this way at the start of the game. Separatist commando droids come with the scale keyword, so vertical corner peeking is a real option for them. Unfortunately, you cannot clamber off the separatist commando droid scout move because scout is a move and not a move action. Another technique surrounding corner peeking is using a medic or a repair droid to restore the second miniature when it dies. Remember that you can only restore a miniature in the same round it was killed. When the second miniature is restored, it can be placed anywhere in cohesion, so make sure to keep it hidden out of line of sight. Without using this corner peeking technique, sniper teams are crazy fragile. Even the low profile ones, even the Clone War snipers with their red defense dice that sometimes surge, you can just be ended by a couple of crits. So always use the corner peeking method. Where and how should I deploy my sniper teams? Sniper teams should deploy where they both have good shots and protection from threats. You want your sniper teams to look down a lane or a linear area of the board that has light or no cover. You especially want to look for lanes your opponent has to advance through to accomplish their objective. You also want to look for targets of opportunity. Say maybe your opponent has left something out of cover in their deployment zone and you can reach it with your range five from your snipers. I've often found it best to deploy snipers at the maximum range of their guns, that is range 5, and then creep them forward over the course of the game while keeping them in as much line of sight blocking as possible. Now each squad has different dice math because their dice are all different, but let's keep it simple. Open aimed shots are best. Unsurprisingly, taking an unaimed shot into heavy cover, even with your sharpshooter 1, is bad. All sniper types shine when they have token support from other sources, whether that's an imperial officer with spotter, an unorthodox tactician and rebels, any unit with electro binoculars, or clone token sharing. Can't forget strategize from Kalani. If you're using the basic arc trooper, having offensive surges also helps. I did say earlier that you shouldn't upgrade your sniper teams, but I actually do recommend offensive push on commando droid snipers 
just because you're trying to cope with AI move when you don't have an order on them. Commando droids have a very consistent dice pool of two surging reds, so you're probably going to get to use lethal when you take offensive push. Now you should also deploy your snipers where they have protection from threats. And the biggest threats to sniper strike teams are fast units and infinite range units. I'm thinking of Iden Versio and Cassian Andor specifically. Snipers are also hugely threatened by infinite range cards like coordinated bombardment, air support, maximum firepower, overwhelming barrage, and orbital strike. Other threats include long range weapons with a critical keyword since crits punch through low profile and heavy cover in general, and FD cannons that can hit at the same range that snipers hit. For everything else, snipers simply shoot at ranges where they cannot be shot back. If your snipers do take fire, you can protect them using Guardian. So if you're a rebel player, that would be Chewbacca, and if you're an Imperial player, that would be your IRG. Clones can use Obi-Wan's Sorosu Mastery. And if you do end up taking wounds, it's not the end of your activation because you're corner peeking. Always be corner peeking. That said, you never want your snipers to be in a place where they can get hit, even by a range 4 weapon from the opposing army. It's a good idea to keep your snipers relatively close to your core troops so that your core troops can protect them. I actually had this happen to me in a recent game where my opponent put all of his snipers in a corner, and made a line with his core troopers in front of them so that my swoop bikes couldn't get to them. And even more than that, his snipers still had heavy cover, even though I could see both miniatures and they had low profile, so my swoops were pretty useless against them. Now this doesn't mean that you can't use your scout move to go away from your army and find another corner to cover another lane. You just have to be conscious of the fact that your snipers won't have any support. So don't throw them out there to get killed by speeder bikes or a T-47. I've often found that it's good to put snipers in opposing short edge corners of the board to generate a cross fire towards the center of the map. Here's another decision point. Should I deploy with both miniatures hidden or one miniature peeking? If you know you won't be shot back, then deploy your snipers peeking so that you can aim and shoot. If you know there's a threat from infinite range bombardment, then I recommend you deploy both miniatures hidden. There's no reason to risk getting shot off the board early. Since arc snipers have tactical one, there's no need to make this choice. They don't have to choose between shooting and moving, so I would always deploy them hidden. Is revealing the second miniature to shoot with it ever valid? Yes, but it's highly context dependent. For GCW snipers, shooting with your second miniature is only valid if you don't care about losing access to high velocity. For Clone Wars snipers, it's nearly always valid to do this because you have more dice, higher natural defenses, and in the case of ARG troopers, you have tactical, so you can aim, expose that second miniature, and shoot with all four dice. In terms of when to do this, you'll have to calculate the risks. Look at the board and see what's left to activate. Think about whether you'll win priority on the next turn, and think about your win condition. Will moving and exposing the second miniature actually help you accomplish the objective? When should I include snipers in my lists? Aimed snipers do consistent chip damage, and their pierce bypasses good defenses on enemy units. So take those if that's what you expect to face, like clones or empire. High velocity snipers are effective against units that rely on dodges like Pike Syndicate foot soldiers and rebel troopers. Use them against Jedi. There's nothing Jedi hate more than being unable to spend a dodge to defend themselves. Snipers can even damage droids effectively if they can secure an open shot to kill two miniatures. Along with their damage, snipers also bring utility to a list, being able to secure an activation kill with pierce or lethal. It can even be worth shooting a target with armor just for the chance at a piercing crit. Snipers also bring utility by being able to strip away standby from outside standby range, clearing the way for your other close ranged units to work. I'll usually start my gun line lists off with two snipers, sometimes going to three if I have room, and in rare cases dropping down to one just because I want that utility of being able to sit on a back objective and influence the battle in the center of the board. And one final thing, don't underestimate the effectiveness of using fire support with a sniper. Both the Mark II in Rebels and the Mortar in Empire can donate their critical keywords for a damage boost. And in clones, you should try fire supporting Echo with a Phase 1 Z6 to see how much damage that can do. If you liked this video, here's another one of mine for you to enjoy. Thanks to our subscribers and our patrons. If you like this video, please do like and comment below. Thanks so much for watching.